Hey there, it's Dan Bader, and I got another fantastic question from a reader of debater.org. So the question is, are all companies using Python these days? What if they want more C++ or Java developers? So I guess the spirit of this question is about, you know, if I learn Python now, am I going to be locked into, um, am I going to be locked into this one-way street and, and I just can't get out? And if Python goes away, you know, in a decade or two decades or, you know, after that, um, what's, what's going to happen? Like, what does it mean in terms of job security? And can I switch these tracks? And super valid qu question, obviously. And this is something that I stressed out when I got into programming as well. Uh, because, well, you know, there's so many languages to choose from. There's always new stats and like, which is the most popular popular language and you know what is the language that most people use what is the language that most employers are looking for if you look at these stats um you know that just came out this year um python is actually doing fantastically great so this this is a pretty good indicator but you know the general question makes absolute sense because it's not always going to be like that right this is just something we have to face as much as i love python and um, as much as you love Python, eventually there's going to be better languages. I mean, this is how we make progress, right? Like very few people ride to work on horses every day today because now we have like really comfy cars and we have public transportation and, you know, we have electric cars, maybe soon self-driving cars. So there's always this progress um, that's being made. And um, there's just eventually going to be something much better than Python. Nobody knows how long this is going to take. Personally, I think just in terms of this, the time scales involved here, it's going to take a while for something that much better to come around where people are switching. You know, I feel like Python is still very much in its growth phase, which is great if you're learning Python these days, um, if you because you want to make a career out of it, or if you want to learn how to program to eventually make some money off of it and not just as a hobby, right? So I, I think Python is doing great in that respect, but still very valid question what's going to happen if if companies are looking for other kinds of developers that know other languages and so my answer is that i wouldn't worry too much about this so on the one hand specialization is 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 a good thing you know if whether you're working as a freelancer or if you're um trying to find a job if you can come in and you can say hey I am your Python person. Like I've been working with Python for the last like X number of years. I have these open source projects. I know this stuff in and out. If you hire me, I'll save you a ton of money, even though I'm not the cheapest person. We're going to have success with this project and it will be a win-win for everybody involved, right? If, if you're probably not going to say that, but um, that's the kind of the vibe and you give off and the impression you, you create, right? And it's going to be true. Um, obviously then specialization is great. Now, of course, the downside of the specialization is if we switch languages, then a lot of that is not going to apply, right? Or, or so you might think, because it turns out with software development and programming languages, a lot of it, you know, the skills that you learn, they're in part, of course, targeted and aimed at a specific language or maybe a specific framework, but a lot of it is actually adaptable to other programming languages as well. So what I've seen happen is that companies hire someone who they think is an experienced developer um, over someone else that is, um, is maybe a beginner in a specific language, right? Because fundamentally, the, the thinking there is that you can just train someone who is good and has a lot of knowledge about programming in general. You know, how do I solve a pro problem with, a, with any with a programming language, um, they you're going to be able to train them and bring them over to a new language, and it can pick up a language like Python relatively quickly. You know, like most, I would say, like if you're an experienced Java developer, you can pick up the basics of Python relatively quickly, and then like you're going to spend maybe a couple of months to make your code uh, what is called more Pythonic, where you're you're making it look like actual like you know. Python code and and that kind of goes with the spirit of Python. But you know, to to make that jump, it's going to be much faster than for someone to learn pr how to program and learn Python at the same time. So to a to a fairly large degree, 
these skills are transferable from one programming language to another. And um, this is why I would, um, this is what I'm, you know, I'm trying to take out some of, take away some of the, 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 the fear here in this question, you know, it's, it's kind of loaded with that, you know, all, are all companies using Python these days? What if they want more C++ or Java developers? Okay, if that happens, and you want to work for those companies, then you, you're going to train in those specific languages. And um, this is going to be, a, of course, a challenging time. I mean, it doesn't feel nice if you've been working on with a particular technology stack, and then you have to retrain. But I think that's just that's just how software development is. The people who are really going to build successful careers and succeed with this stuff over the long term are the ones that are flexible and that have this mindset where they're thinking, okay, you know, I love, I really love working with Python um, right now, but I know it's not the end all. And eventually we're going to switch to something else that is better. That doesn't make Python any worse. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we're all going to start uh, learning Java right now, but it's just a reality of it. Yeah. You know, and the, and the, the earlier, the sooner you can accept this mindset, the better it will be for you long term, because you're just going to have that flexibility and you're going to feel comfortable just saying, okay, you know, I see the market is shifting. Um, the market is shifting away from maybe what I already know. So I need to learn more skills in another, um, in another um, area there to be able to, to uh, remain employable or to get the kinds of jobs that I want, you know, and, um, with Python, it has a lot of momentum right now, which I think is great because it's if once you have that momentum, it kind of takes um, it takes a long time for that to succeed, you know. And so a lot of people are going to be able to ride out this way for a really long time. But um, of course, there will be new technologies that that you're going to have to pick up as part of your career. You know, um, when uh, when I started working for a web development company, initially I didn't know much about JavaScript. Um, and I learned it on the job and I was able to get relatively good at this stuff relatively quickly because I already know, knew about all of the programming principles, right? Like once you've got that stuff down, you can be very methodical about it, right? You can just ask around and be like, Hey, what are the best books to learn? Um, C++, given that I'm already an experienced programmer, people are going to give you great recommendations. Then, you know, you can ask around like, hey, what's the best linter that I should use to um, check my C++ code for code style issues? What is the best test runner I should use? You know, you can just, you, you, you're going to find the same kinds of tools um, for any programming language out there, like for most established programming languages anyway, right? And the same is true for like, if you want to switch to JavaScript, like, you know, if you build a couple of Django apps and you know how to do web development with Python, which is in my opinion, a fantastic way to learn the skill because Python is just such an enjoyable language to work with. And um, it kind of reduces that barrier to entry. Um, if you if you then need to switch to JavaScript, well, you can just, you know, search Google, like what is the, the equivalent of Django in the JavaScript world? And people are going to point, you know, they're going to tell you like, first of all, you need to learn about this thing called Node.js to make these backend apps. And then there's a couple of uh, frameworks and libraries that are somewhat similar maybe to Django, and this is how you interact with a database, and this is how you do web templating and HTML templating on all of that stuff, right? But most of the underlying knowledge, it's actually gonna fully translate over. Like if you've worked with Django templates, then working with a JavaScript-based te uh, templating language, it's gonna be very easy for you to adapt those skills. You know, Once you know how to deploy a Python application to production, it will be very, very similar um, if for any kind of other um, programming environment and programming language, like you're, you, you want to make sure you, you learn these concepts and you understand these concepts so that you can adapt them to, um, to other languages. It's sort of like in object and object oriented programming, how you have classes and then instances of these classes, you know, the actual objects, like you, you want to be good at figuring out these, these classes of problems. And then whether you program in Python or JavaScript or something else, that's just an instance of, of this problem. You know, it's a bit of a weird analogy here maybe, but um, whatever. So, um, but, and I think it's true. Like, actually, I think this is true, right? So whatever you can do to learn these fundamental principles, you'll be able to adapt them to whatever the circumstances are. 
And um, this is how you are successful in the long term as a developer. Now, you know, one more thing that I wanted to mention before the end of this video is that there's just so much demand for software developers right now. It almost doesn't matter what you're getting into. Um, you know, if you if you can solve people's problems with programming, you will be able to find work and people will be willing to train you on the job. Like, I don't know how much longer this will remain, but in my opinion, this is still a fantastic opportunity. And there's a lot of opportunity in Python also specifically just because, you know, it has so much momentum and, and, and companies are going to make more and more investments towards Python because they can get people who already know it and it's being taught in universities. And um, so I think we're still, you know, we, we haven't reached the peak of that wave. So now is like a really good time to get in. But nevertheless, you want to be prepared for when that time comes that you can switch to something else. You know, like I've in the past, I've done mobile development, um, you know, writing iOS and Android apps for, for clients and also co-founded uh, a company where our core product was um, a mobile app and then, you know, some API backend and website and a website associated with that. So um, I, I learned that and then I did it for a while and then I went and did something else. And it was, it, to me, it always, always felt like a relatively smooth transition and actually a very enjoyable thing, you know, because I got to learn um, completely different um, patterns of interactions, you know, how do you use, how do people use a mobile application versus, versus how they use um, a web application. And a lot of it is very similar, but, and, and now like these things are actually like merging together now where most or like many new mobile applications are actually web applications in, in, in the background there, you know, like fewer and fewer people write native applications. So this is all interconnected. And um, I actually, as a developer, I get a kick out of learning new stuff and, and learning new technologies. And so this is kind of the mindset you wanna approach this with and you wanna approach your career with in order to have a fulfilling and a successful career as a software developer. All right, so I hope this answered the question. Uh, feel free to leave comments below the video and it would be great to have a discussion about this topic because I think it is a really, really interesting and very, very important question. All right, thanks for listening and have a good one.